This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. to the podcast. This is Gordon Brewer, and you're listening to episode number 282 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. So I'm glad you're with us in this journey. And, um, you know, as I've said many times before, you know, one of the things I love about doing a podcast like this one is I get to talk to a lot of fascinating people from across the world and uh, just learn about new things. I'm always learning new stuff. And this is one particular episode, which I got uh, a pretty good education on indigenous medicines uh, and folks that are using traditional medicines, particularly here that in the United States that a lot of the indigenous folk have known about and used for years, but they're incorporating it into a mental health treatment and getting um, getting some breakthrough kinds of stuff. I think uh, if you listen to a few episodes back, I also had a conversation with uh, Jonathan Sabal about using psychedelics in treatment. Um, again, kind of an unconventional way of thinking about treatment, but I learned from our guest today, uh, Kara Lovick, just about um, indigenous medicines and nat- natural medicines that are found here in the Americas and how they're being used uh, to, uh, to help with mental health issues. So hopefully you'll find this fascinating. I found it absolutely fascinating and just really thinking outside the box about how we best help people. So looking forward to you hearing my conversation with Cara. Before we get to that, I'd love for you to find out more about the Money Matters and Private Practice course. Um, A few years ago, I put this together um, really as a way to help people understand one of the most important parts about uh, being in private practice, and that is the financial side of things. So I would invite you to go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash money matters. And if you will use the promo code just simply June 2023, you can get 10% off on that course for the month of June. So be sure and check it out. Practiceoftherapy.com slash money matters. Um, and if you get the, um, the kind of the premium version of the course, I'm joined by Julie Harris, who uh, from Green Oak Accounting. And Julie's recently written a book called Profit First for Therapists. So um, go go sure, be, be sure to check it out. Practiceoftherapy.com slash money matters. And also real quickly before do we get to my conversation with Cara, I'd love for you to hear from one of the members of the Sitecraft Network and also from our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. Hey there, if we haven't met, my name is Lisa Mustard and I'm the person behind the scenes of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard, a podcast where I interview seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapists from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. Plus, you can also earn continuing education contact hours from some of my episodes. So to learn more about the show and get your first continuing education contact hour for free, head on over to my site, lisamustard.com. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. 
With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, folks, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm looking forward to you getting to hear from Kara Lovick. Well, welcome, Kara. Hi, Gordon. Thanks for having me on. Yes. And so this is going to be an interesting topic. I don't know that I was telling Kara before we started recording, I don't think that we've ever broached this topic. And I'm really looking forward to learning a lot from Kara just about the use of indigenous medicine incorporating that with our practices and what we do clinically with folks. But as I start with everyone, Cara, why don't you tell folks a little more about yourself and how you've landed where you landed? Well, I've been volunteering for healers for over nine years, and mostly I've been volunteering for traditional indigenous healers of Peru from both traditions, both Amazonian and high Andean Kiro traditions. So really, I am a podcaster. And also I I help people facilitate that work with traditional indigenous healers. And uh, yeah, so I just focus on educating people, educating everyone that wants to know a little bit about it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So let's start from the beginning and tell folks a little bit more about this, because I dare say that a lot of folks have not maybe not run across this or not had any experience with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would assume so, because it wouldn't mean we'd have to leave our own culture mm-hmm. to be able to, you know, venture out. And and you know, we have our own systems for dealing with health, mental health. And so there's been a few people that have ventured out to see what this is about and they've had really positive results. And really, I think that the way that we can really look at it, I mean, I, I'm sure you've, you've seen or heard about Carl Jung's work. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carl Jung really believed in the power of the unconscious, the wisdom that lied there. And he believed if we could figure out how to work with it, if we could kind of decode a lot of the messages that come in, whether with dreams, synchronicities, different kinds of things like this, we could probably figure out something greater, something that can really be pivotal for the client and their healing journey. And Carl Jung designed a system, a discipline that has roots in the conscious world. So in order to learn about Carl Jung, we have to go to college, we have to read books, we have to write essays, Mm. we have a process. Now, traditional indigenous healers have a discipline with roots in the unconscious world. So the way that they learn is through telepathy, through energetics, through they don't have any books, they don't have any sort of courses. It is a very different thing. So while Carl Jung is waiting for some something cool to come over from the unconscious, that is where they live. They live in the unconscious. They've they've designed, they've pioneered a system that navigates that world yes. pretty well. Yeah. Oh, that's so. cool. That's cool. So yeah, I think one, one of the things that I've kind of learned over this last year, I had one of my former graduate school professors, Dr. Clift, Clift Mitchell, and he was talking about prime brain priming and that he was just talking about whether there's so much of a of our functioning that is done on the, at the unconscious level. And so, I mean, that's, I could see how this ties in very well with that way of thinking, way of, of approaching things. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so with, with all of this, tell us how you see this fitting in with mental health and just how this can be helpful to people. Well, I think that what, what what's kind of happening is that there is a lack of continuity with the clients that we see going to South America. And we need, 
ideally, both disciplines are running at the same time. Even when a client wants to go out to say, for example, seek ayahuasca for alleviating addiction, suicide ideation, these kinds of things. We do really well with these things. But when the client goes back, they're going to need to rebuild their life because if we've drastically reduced or alleviated those symptoms, that person has to recreate their lives. For example, with with addiction urges, a client might have built an entire world based around this addiction. Now, when they get back, it's like a little scary. It's a little scary. Reducing the, alleviating those symptoms is a very tiny part of that healing journey. That is what traditional indigenous healers really, they do well with, they ex- excel with that. But again, we don't do the day-to-day support. We don't have those kind of resources. We don't have that kind of skill to offer. So ideally, both disciplines are running parallel, especially when a client is considering traditional indigenous medicines. It would be good to, yeah, be in communication. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So can you describe a little more about kind of living in the unconscious or starting with the unconscious? Because that that might be a, a kind of a concept for people to get their heads around. Yeah, it's. Oh, so. I think that for, well, Carl Jung saw it as two things, right? We inherited this biological aspect of who we are and then this inborn intuition aspect, right? For traditional indigenous healers, that is true. We're kind of all talking the same language, but for them, the physical is basically like the last frontier of manifestation. Everything underneath is energetics and spiritual. That orchestration of energetics and spiritual aspects of life, maybe the quantum tiniest, tiniest levels of reality, that's what they study. That's what they look and understand. So when they're looking for problems, they're looking for problems in that area of the spectrum of of reality. So they've been able to design this system. They've been able to pioneer it in a very interesting way. They're very close to Mother Earth and they have this culture where they just don't see a difference. They just see an extension of of family, right? So the waterfall, the sacred mountains, the sacred plants, they are family because they're able to communicate with them. So this is a pre-Columbian healing tradition, that, and that's really mm-hmm. how it started. Now, mm-hmm. with that communication with Mother Earth, with sacred mountains, they were able to then pioneer because it was those secret beings that allowed them to navigate this unconscious world. And that is really how they work. Every time they do healing, whether it's ayahuasca, that's a, an, an Amazonian medicine, they work with the sacred plant of ayahuasca. So this is a very interesting, it's a different kind of, it's a different framework than ours mm-hmm. because we hyper-focus on the physical, which is really helpful, but they hyper-focus on that world. And that is mm-hmm. how they navigate it. Right, right. So with the ayahuasca, I was, uh, as I was sharing with Cara before we started recording, had to, in a previous episode, we talked about the use of psychedelics in, in therapy and that there's just been a lot of efficacy around that and being able to help people kind of have kind of breakthroughs with their depression, anxiety, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. How is this ayahuasca different in, in that sense? Well, um, I think that psychedelic treatments are kind of the tip of the iceberg. They're the key, and and people use psychedelics to kind of open the door. And in the case of ayahuasca, for example, she's very different from a psychedelic because she is alive. This is a sacred being that will enter your body or the body of, of a client and will really coach them through their traumas, coach them through their problems very personally because she's alive. Now, you know, other psychedelic LSD, anything else is not alive. And the healer communicates and works with that sacred being, which is one with that client working out things. So it is very different. And also that DMT, that psychoactive is just it's, it's just enough to open up that person's energetics and then the other work is done. But psychedelics is a t- just it's it's a it's a, like baby steps of mm-hmm. what this world is about, because you could do a lot of things without any psychedelics because of yeah. understanding this this unconscious world. 
So they are, they are the masters when it comes to dealing with the unconscious, which would include drug kind of psychedelics. They are the masters of that realm of unconscious. And that's really what we step into when we're dealing with psychedelics and things like that. Right. Right. Yeah. This is, this is fascinating stuff. So if somebody were interested in kind of dipping their toe in this and really kind of, kind of find out more about all of this, where would be a good starting place for them to really kind of. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would definitely recommend that podcast, traditional medicine podcast with Carl Lovick. I really do break things down. I go with, I, I break down Amazonian traditions and mm-hmm. their medicines, which include ayahuasca, cambo, and then also the high Andean Kiro tradition. They're very different, but we really, I, I try to make sure that we're working on the basics and, and building foundation with, mm-hmm. with some of those episodes. So I would recommend that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. And we'll have links here to, for to Kara's podcast here in the show notes. So, yeah. So what, what else do you think would be important for us to know about just this yeah. whole approach? So let's say a client says, Gordon, I, I, I heard about ayahuasca. I saw this incredible documentary and people were alleviating, you know, depression and suicidal ideation. And you know what? I think I want to give it a go. When they, this, so ayahuasca is a very popular medicine in the Amazonian tradition, but it's not the only medicine out there. Mm -hmm. Each medicine is good for something. Amazonian disciplines tend to be very tough on the body because you have to, you know, you have to purge, you have to have a special diet prior to drinking and being in ceremony. There's a lot of requirements that have to happen, but there's also the high Andean Kiro disciplines that don't require any of that and they work remotely so a client doesn't even have to travel so there are people for example that they may have psychosis ayahuasca is not a good thing for them Mm -hmm. they might be pregnant you definitely don't want to do that so Mm -hmm. there there's there's cases for each uh there's there's medicines and disciplines for each case and Mm -hmm. the the whole thing is that you hopefully that client will seek someone out that understands the different disciplines, different medicines, and can connect them with the right kind of action plan, so to speak. Right, right. So are there are there people that are specifically trained in the in the use of these things? That yeah, these well, medicines? Yeah, well, traditional indigenous healers are are the the best. And mm-hmm. there's a few reasons for that. One is that they grew up in that kind of culture. So while, for example, energy healers in the modern society that we live in, maybe at 14, they're learning about concepts of energy and healing work. These children are mastering very complex concepts in these in these traditions. So we can't really compare them, and especially with their own tradition. They speak the language, they speak, they're in that culture. So you really, I, I think, I've tried all kinds of different things. It's always going to be the traditional indigenous healer that is going to do the best work. Mm-hmm. No, no question about it. Right. Are there, are there any, I know you said you primarily work with the Kiro. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. The healers in, in South America and Peru right. and that sort yeah. of area. What about here in the United States? You know, I think about the indigenous peoples, the various various oh, yeah. tribes and that sort of thing are huh? there are there some that really kind of stand out for you as being really tuned in well to this well I, you know it there's they have some incredible medicine for sure i don't that's not i haven't ventured too much into their mm-hmm. medicines and i have had some conversations with them about certain things because i i really feel that there needs to be some solidarity between them they have a lot of resources that the traditional indigenous healers in the amazon for example don't have and they're fighting a real fight with preserving the lungs of this planet for example um so i've talked to them and you know they have their different opinions about medicine sometimes you know they don't feel that maybe some people should acquire you know this service exchange thing but you know but also uh, these communities don't even have public schools so it's it's kind of like they're they're standing at different places but uh, yeah i i my mother's from chile in that region so i really feel that's my that's my 
my territory, so to speak, in terms of mm-hmm. understanding these medicines. Yeah. But I'm well, sure they have incredible, I've, I've come across some incredible medicine, dancing, singing. They do some really beautiful work, but I don't know it as much as I do yeah, South Americans. Right. Yeah. yeah. So how, how was it that you got interested in this whole thing? You know, it, it's, it's a funny story. I've never really cared about any of this stuff. Uh-huh. It wasn't a thing for me. One day, uh, my friend had, you know, this person wanted to try something called DMT, which is very, very strong kind of concoction of a thing that lasts about 10 minutes. And it, it's really like a, a strong psychedelic. Mm-hmm. And he would talk about it and he wanted to try it. And I was like, oh, have fun. He's like, yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, Cara, you really need to try this. And I said, I don't, you know, I don't care whether there is a spirit realm, whether there isn't a spirit realm has nothing to do with me. I do not really care about it. But then he's like, you know, I really want to know. You got to check this out. I feel like I'm crazy. Is it real or is it not? Because I think there's a spirit realm or some sort of other aspect of life. And, you know, he, he really begged me to do it. So I ended up doing it. And I was like, wow, this is real but incredibly dangerous i think i've had enough he's like no 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 you gotta break through you really gotta check this out and i just said oh gosh okay i guess i'll try that and and it was a really powerful experience but afterward i had developed a gragophobia you know i couldn't come out of my my house i was afraid of cartoons i mean for two weeks i had my best friend with me and i said okay now i'm going to have to (laughs) seek professional mental health I might be on antipsychotics my entire life. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm thinking in these two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, if what I saw is true, then I am going to first, because I, I have medication always there for me, thank goodness. That route is always there. I might even have to be institutionalized. Who knows? So I said, you know, I'm going to seek out a, a shaman. At that time, I called them shamans. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Because I had heard people talk about it. And I found a couple in Miami, thank goodness for them, that, you know, I was able to contact. And I, I felt something behind my back. It was a very weird thing. And I went to them and they kind of got a rattle. I, they were kind of like a hybrid of, they just learned a little bit of everything. They weren't a traditional indigenous healer per se, but they kind of got a rattle and they were trying to look at my field. And I said, right here, that's where you got to see because I can feel something here. And it took them a while, but I was pretty determined not to leave there until at least they saw it. And eventually one of the man, the couple, the man said, I got you. I see it. I see it. I see it. And for 40 minutes did this healing. And afterward, I was done. I had no anxiety. I could breathe again. I was, you know, I was watching cartoons. I mean, everything was returned to me. And I said, okay, how did you do that? And that started nine years ago. And I said, I'm not going anywhere until I really understand what's happening. Because what you're telling me is you've done something to me that has affected my entire body without giving me anything. You haven't given me a pill. You haven't done Mm -hmm. anything. I've tried everything and I could not shake this off. So yeah, we're going to have to get to the bottom of that. And that's how I started volunteering for people, which eventually led me to really the strongest medicines that we have here in the Americas, I would believe. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, Cara, I want to be respectful of your time. And, and this has been a great, great conversation. Tell folks how they can find out more and maybe connect with you and your podcast and that sort of thing. Yeah. If you, if you're on Instagram, I love making friends. Traditional medicine Miami is the way that you can find me. And the podcast is available pretty much everywhere. If you're on Spotify, Traditional Medicine Podcast with Carl Lovick is the podcast. And you could always reach out also on traditionalmedicinemiami.com and send me a message. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. And and yeah, would love awesome. to connect people. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to be following your podcast here shortly. Well, big thanks to Cara for joining me on this podcast. And also be sure and check out her podcast, Traditional Medicine with Cara Lovick. Um, So yeah, be sure and check it out and follow her podcast as well, along with this one. And um, yeah, 
I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to some episodes. It's always interesting to think about things in new ways and really find out what seems to be working for a lot of people just around traditional medicine. So uh, also be sure and check out the Money Matters and Private Practice course. And again, for the month of June, if you'll use the promo code June2023, you can get 10% off any version of that course. So be sure and check it out by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash money matters. Um, yeah, put a lot of work into that course of really teaching people the whole financial side of running a private practice. And again, big thanks to our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. And you can find out more about them by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And again, use the promo code just Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, to try them out for two months for free. And so that's it for this episode, folks. I'll be back with you in your ears next week. Got lots of great guests lined up for the rest of this season and looking forward to uh, being with you in your journey in private practice. Take care, folks. You've been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com. And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.